my infant ears are pricked. Discordant voices strike incessantly. Unfamiliar vowel sounds drag on for days. Harsh consonants attack and overwhelm us. This language is theirs and I don't speak mine. When my mouth finally opens, it's the other kids' ears that are pricked. Their brows furrowed by the bath and the grass and the class that I bring from my home, my family, my world that seems like a million miles away now. A whole day's drive up the A1 to villages where cousins and aunties and grandmas live a couple of doors from each other. Play together, grow together, drink together. But here I am in South End on, you don't sound like you're from round here, see? And I am totally alone, cast adrift in foreign waters. My brothers hang on to their northeastern sound, the short ah, the long o. Oh. Mam will always be mam, but I'm four years old and I can already feel my tongue starting to shed its skin like a snake. What will be revealed? What sounds will it make when, when it's freed from its original mold? Mammy becomes mummy. No becomes no. And with that shedding tongue, I enter my linguistic limbo. Code switching between school and home becomes the norm. School voice, aiming for a cheeky barra boy, but not quite achieving the form. One day, forget to say classroom, eyes and ears accuse. And is it plasticine or plasticine? I'm never sure which one to use. Home voice, accent steadily fading, but struggling to hang on to those sacred ah sounds. So today, I wore my glasses in class to pass a test. It's a mixed up mashup of a mess. Go up north to see family voice gives me free reign to uh, ham it right up. So it's E, man, I know Michelle. I can't believe it, but he's dead canny though, pet. <laughs> Life lumbers ever on. Last remnants of the motherland from my voice now gone. Bath becomes bath once and for all and vocal purgatory is done. Settle into a soft southern sound that invites intrigue instead of ridicule. Hmm, where are you from? In my teens, myriad vocal temptations present themselves through the magic of media, namely home and away and neighbours, and I find my accent in, uh, in flux again. Infiltrated and coloured by what I see and hear on a daily basis. Always adapting, accommodating, learning and relearning. I suppose it becomes a bit of a party trick. <laughs> you know, like identify this voice, pass for this nationality, order a drink in his accents. I mean, there's no real downside to this except... Every so often after I've had a few too many, I might just unwittingly slip into someone's accent and it becomes a bit creepy. <laughs> it's just... I don't know. I can't think straight. Because all of these voices in my head and I feel like I'm sort of channeling them and vomiting them out into the world and... <sighs> my mind's just a mess of chatter. The voices swirl around and around in my head and... I can't seem to distinguish who I am anymore, what's real and what's fabrication. I'm exhausted, I'm fucking exhausted. So I take a breath. And in my, in my mind, I make a pilgrimage, 300 miles north to a cosy house in a tiny village. Familiar sounds envelop us, comfort us, Give us a sense of who I am at my very core. And that doorway is always unlocked. Sometimes I just need a nice warm Geordie cuddle and I'm me again. Um, I sometimes share quite political poems uh, about education. This one is less political, more what really happens in my classroom, or what really used to happen in my classroom. 25 curious young minds, oh, so eager to learn. 50 shining eyes which look at me in turn. A 100 little ha hands and feet 
kept still on lap and floor, their innocent faces bursting with childish wonder and awe. Which present precious nuggets of wisdom should I impart today? Which piece of literary treasure to send them on their way? And as they navigate the wider world in childhood and beyond, will they look back with a wistful smile and their memories be fond? Well, of course they won't. For this charming scene is a fantasy, not real. What really goes on in my classroom, I'll do my best to describe with zeal. A rambunctious rabble of miniature louts who grumble as if they're in pain. If I even mention the dreaded word maths and shout, no miss, not numbers again. And quiet reading, quiet my ass. I don't have the energy to rage, so I turn a blind eye to the Hot Wheels and the one reading an upside down page. Then Timothy goes to the toilet and Priya is sick on the floor. Some reps for something or other are selling tickets at the classroom door. The dinner numbers are incorrect. The progress data I've given is wrong. There's a visitor coming on Tuesday, so we all have to learn some shit song. <laughs> Nathan is under the table and Leo is pulling Sam's hair. The incessant sound of pencils tapping and a faint smell of farts fill the air. <laughs> Meanwhile, the kids keep on chatting with not even a glance my way. Then a couple of loves give the loud ones a shove and say, Miss has got something to say. I sigh dramatically. Fake a yawn. <sighs> then trot out the decades old line. That's five minutes off break time you've earned yourself. It's your time you're wasting, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> So let's follow those children into the future. Um, this poem is set in the Norman Cook retirement home, somewhere in Essex in the year 2060. Grumbling, embarrassed, reluctant, their teenage feet drag through the door. This weekly torture of visiting Gramps is beginning to be such a bore. The hallway stinks of CK1, the laminate flooring is slippy, the residents delight when Friday's dinner tastes just like it's from a real chippy. The oldies are riddled with piercings the grandchildren can't understand. One of them asks, are tattoos infectious? When old Archie Bow holds their hand. The decor is twee and annoying with live, love and laugh everywhere. And grannies with microbladed eyebrows are still rocking the rainbow hair. The kids just can't get their heads round the entertainment they put on in here must have been ever so different in Gaga and Pop Pop's best year. Breaking Bad is on loop in the background. Game of Thrones posters flank the wall. While the old dears who have, sorry, while the old dears who still have their bladder control are attending a rave in the hall. <laughs> they use the most archaic vocab, calling things wicked or sweet. When the kids try to talk about tech stuff, their advice is control, alt, delete. Eventually the visit is over. The moody teens are finally gone. They don't see Great Gramps flipping the finger and hit play on his fave prodigy song. Oh. <laughs> 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 <laughs>